What's happening guys? July is officially in the books. This is a Sunday scan for August 2nd and the week ahead. Uh, we've been firing all cylinders. Things have been good. This is my style market. Everybody's got their kind of market where they can uh, really outperform. And over the last couple weeks, it has just been getting exceptionally hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. So uh, I have to be personally aware just because I know I'm only one trade away from doing something silly. And as we've discussed before, the longer you can stay firing on all cylinders, the faster it adds up. You look back and you're like, whoa, how did I get here? And that's a good place to be. And that's where I want to stay. Uh, but, you know, like I said, if you kind of get into that see what it does mode or uh, I'm going to go exercise on this and, you know, forget risk management. No, that's where you can start to get in trouble. And then you start to get into that get back mentality and all of that kind of stuff where, it's not a good place to be. Uh, as we've discussed before, uh, when you're trading well, maybe you're doing less screen time. Maybe you're trading less. Maybe you're doing bigger picture trade ideas, right? All of these things are the result of solid trading. When you're not trading well, you stay at the desk more. You put in more hours. You start uh, trying to figure out what trades you should trade and, and force trades. When I'm trading exceptionally well, I'm waiting for the trades. The trades are coming to me. I'm not going to them. And that's probably the biggest difference between my, my outlier months, outlier weeks, outlier days, and just the mediocre ones, right? Is those trades are coming to me. So think about that, especially when uh, you're kind of having a so-so week or you've had a loss or you've had a drawdown. You know, what were you doing before that you know, you were, you were hitting those marks. You were, you were steadily growing and you were steadily exponentially potentially growing. Uh, get back to that. And so that's where I'm at right now where I am trying to just stay, stay firing on all cylinders. And for example, after a solid morning, you know, I've only come back to A plus type opportunities with any size. I've not been sizing into anything unless it's an A-plus opportunity, unless there's some type of outlier event, a great chart, parabolic move, fail fall through momentum, it has to fit into a category. If it doesn't, I'm not trading it. And if I am, it's just to get a feel for what's going on so that if and when that A-plus opportunity does set up, I have a pretty solid read on the opportunity. So, uh, like I said last week, sometimes I just like to start into a, a position just to kind of get a feel so that when and if it, the trade does come, I'm already I'm already kind of part of what's going on. And I already kind of understand the uh, the name, the stock's personality. So that's the concept of starting in with a feeler trade. Uh, as you guys know, each week, all you have to do, like the video, leave a comment, leave a comment of key takeaway. Helps us help you. We make little micro content of those videos. People love them. Uh, and my goal, as always, is to create aha moments, right? And um, so that's what we do. And, and as, a, as a thank you to you, uh, I give away free t-shirts, uh, scans, IU, and icon meals. So I'm sure we'll add extra. Um, I tried to have the, the people with that, um, that posture thing that I went over last week uh, give me some to give out. But uh, they, they said you guys were not their clientele. So... I guess they're not looking for people that sit at their desk all day. Um, let's see. This week's winners, IU Shirt, Ethan Inman. And free IU Month, Holton D. So if you guys just email me, webmaster at investorsunderground.com, uh, and I will get you guys situated with, uh, with those uh, contest winnings. Now... Uh, we had a great show up Saturday, so-so uh, this morning for Avidity Fitness. Uh, I did an awful job inspiring people last week on Sunday Video Scan, so uh, maybe I should just give it up. But uh, I, I think that uh, it's it's hand-in-hand -hand with trading well. Uh, I think the energy that, that you need to kind of um, you know trade well and be in the zone comes from both exercising and eating right. So... Uh, if you can easily fix those two constants, it's going to then brush off into your trading, in my opinion. So uh, I put the information for the Zoom classes in the scans so that you guys can participate in them. 
Uh, but if you had not reached out to Zach already, I've got the information in the scan. You can DM him on Instagram, Z-T-M-U-L-L-I-N, or uh, on Twitter as uh, Avidity Fitness. Hit him up and he'll get you all the information that you need. Uh, all right, so a couple notes and then I'll get into the uh, questions that you guys sent in that I felt would be good for Sunday video scan. Uh, first and foremost, it's a super trader friendly market. If you're jumping in front of stuff, then you're probably having a hard time. If you're trading random stuff, you're probably having a hard time. If you're chasing stuff, we talked about it last week. If you're chasing social media alerts because these guys post big PLs, you're giving them that PL. Trust me, you're giving them that PL. So wait for setups that you're familiar with. Wait for things that you've seen before. You don't have to chase that first candle. Wait for a setup to come in. Sometimes there's Seeking Alpha articles. Sometimes there's news, right? And just because it's got a high point target, just because it has news does not mean that it's going to turn into a great trade. There are times that I just, if I don't have a good entry, I'll see how it reacts to that, right? And if it has a high point target and the market starts to develop, I'd rather be buying higher later after that market has developed rather than just trying to chase the next move. So keep that in mind. Um, but like I said, it's a super trader friendly market if you are behaving. And by behaving, I essentially mean letting these things exhaust out, letting these things find bottoms. SAVA, S-A-V-A on Friday. There's zero reason to try to find the bottom. I've been there, I've done that, right? And it's just, you start in and all of a sudden you double up and you double up. You're already at max size on your first double up. And meanwhile, you're 4X, 5X, you're, you know, where you thought you'd ever be. And then it goes down another $10 and you lose your shirt and you had your biggest loss ever, right? Uh, I'm sure that was the case for a lot of people and it's unfortunate. Maybe, maybe not. But, sod a mile away. Yeah, I wish I could have gotten short a little bit more. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. You can't get them all, but I know what to stay away from. And that's a great example. Just like you don't short the front side of the move with size and trying to find the top, trying to find the top, don't find outlier unwinds the bottom. Don't find the bottom on them because sometimes there isn't one. Um, so, uh, focus on risk. Back to my process, right? So, right now, for me, uh, I am so focused on risk. I'm, I'm scaling in, I'm sizing in after these big exchanges happen. A lot of people ask, what do you mean by an exchange? And we talk about it literally every day in the Trader's Lounge. And we're watching for that volume with little to no offer movement, but making sure that we are aware they may pull the goalie. And if you guys don't remember what that is, I went over it the last two Sunday scans. Um, but, as I scale, the biggest thing about scaling and sizing up into trades is if the thesis changes, if the stock stops doing what you thought, you need to know where you're wrong. You need to know where the trade is no longer playing out to, as you expected. And that's the point where you need to size down. That's the point where you need to kind of have your game plan and your risk management in check. Because what happens, and I've done it a million times in the past, you scale, you scale, you scale, starts to reverse course, and then you kind of go back to break even. But now you have a full size position, you're at max risk. And if it starts to go into the red, you're starting to compound that loss super fast, super fast, exponentially, because you're sized in. So. Anytime you're sizing into that winner, focus on that risk, focus on where the trade no longer is doing what you expected and move on. You can always get right back in. We've talked about that before as well. People are afraid to pay the commission. People are afraid to kind of get in and out. You can get right back in, I promise you. Levels, levels, levels. Uh, you know, look left. Look at prior uh, support levels. Look at prior resistance levels. And you don't need to anticipate them in this market. There is so much meat on the bone right now that you just need to get a piece of it. And it's way more than anything that's been out there in the past, right? So when there is this much range, you only need to get a piece of the meat to have a really, really exceptional trade. So 
Uh, basically, what I mean by that is don't be trying to find the top or find the bottom. Just try to get the meat. And what happens is if you're on the front side of that move, you're going to exhaust yourself. That trade's going to come. The exhaustion move will come. It exhausts everybody out, including you. And then the clean, steady fade comes in. Or in this case, you know, on, on something like Sava, maybe the rally finally comes in. But you've already stopped out. You're exhausted. You're like, screw it. I'm done. And that's the point. That's the point. You want to stay away from that. Uh, so let these trades come to you. And don't be trying uh, to find the trades. When I'm trading poorly, I'm finding trades. I'm trying to find trades. I'm trying to trade. When I'm trading well, I'm not trading. I'm waiting for trades. I'm letting them come to me. Uh, let's see. So the other note was, what do you do when you're trading uh, your best repeat, right? So you know what you do when you're trading your best. That should always be just repeat, 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 repeat. And when you're trading poorly, go back to that and repeat it over and over and over. And the last note that I had was sometimes the hardest part is taking profits on swings. Last week we talked about FWP. It was a, nearly a triple. So I know it's hard to take profits, but you know we had a nice pullback finally. So hopefully it sets back up again and gives another opportunity to accumulate. Same thing with MOXC. I spent the last two Sunday video scans saying 31 has been the top. Yeah, it could go, and if it does, maybe it goes crazy. But if you didn't have proper risk management, if you didn't lock in, which that one also almost doubled, you know, it, you're going to get back a huge amount of your p &L. So, again, it's always hard once you're on the right side of a trade not to overstay. I did it on Playboy, like I've said the past couple scans. You know, I was looking for a lot more. I let what I wanted to happen kind of take over the trade. So that's why on FWP and that's why on um, MOXC, that's why I was a broken record because it doesn't matter what you want out of it. What matters is the trend and the price and what's happening. So keep that in mind. All right, let's uh, jump forward into these uh, questions that were sent in. The first one was from Mike. How do you weed out the noise coming from various chat rooms and Twitter? Uh, what do you pay attention to? Uh, and not to. So I'm actually not in any rooms. I used to be in a few, maybe two years ago or so. Uh, just kind of monitor the flow, monitor what's going on, monitor what uh, people are promoting, right? And what happens is you start to form a little bit of a bias sometimes based on what you see in the tape, based on, all right, this person's going long, 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 everybody's on the wrong side. And what happens is that trade plays out. That trade plays out because everybody starts to short that move, right? And at some point, if it holds, everybody's on the wrong side. So for me, I know my biggest and best asset is actually reading the tape and seeing the action. And if I can just pay attention to that, that's all I care about. Now, there's a lot of people that I surround myself with, so I know what's going on a lot of times. There's different rooms that are pushing different names, and it's always good to know uh, in the back of your mind that uh, a particular room is promoting it. However, you don't want to put too much confidence in that because things are always changing. So what you want to remember is that if certain room, certain Twitter, certain whatever has been super, super long, if and when it starts to unwind, just know the general trader is not going to sell, right? So as it starts to unwind, it's going to be this slow and steady unwind trade, which is why, like we talked about last time, there was a lot of 30 and 40% haircuts because everybody's holding. They don't want to sell. They don't want to sell. They don't want to sell. They panic sell. And then that's really the fantastic trade. So again, it's waiting for levels, waiting for the trend to shift. And uh, at the end of the day, a lot of these trades that they are pushing end up lower than where they started because they accumulated such size, pushed it to their followers, sold out of it, and then all these people are left to panic sell later on. So, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's kind of a waste to be in, in a bunch of different rooms. Uh, I'm in none. So, uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, it's good to be aware. 
I fortunately have a, a good team kind of around me that does monitor those types of things. But for me to be in all these different spots and, and knowing who, what, when, where, why, uh, it just hasn't really benefited me that much. And, and sometimes it ends up hurting you. So um, next one was from IL Trader. Uh, hey, Nate, you always say the best way to learn is uh, the tape is to record the screen. What types of plays and action do you recommend to record and study for the best practice? And thank you for doing everything you do. So um, every day, there's at least one or two names that I pretty much suggest to record in the room. And the reason why I say to record them is because there's some type of outlier action, outlier activity, uh, outlier range. Maybe it's a, a short kind of squeeze. Maybe there's a lot of action happening on the level two. And uh, maybe they're creating that false ceiling. So, uh, what was what? Uh, Neuro, and then there was uh, FLGC this week. And it was creating that false ceiling, but yet it was absorbing every time. So it had a ceiling and it would flush down, but they'd, they'd absorb everything every single time. So to me, that stuck out. So I told everybody, you know, put on your recorders because if this is a false ceiling and they do their dip and rip up, we're going to have a huge trade into the close. And although I don't think that it's the next neuro, I think everybody will. And I think we're going to have a good opportunity. So that's an example of, of one. Uh, and then there was another one. And uh, it wasn't NTech, I don't think. But um, there was one this week that uh, reminded me a lot of Watt, W-A-T-T. -T, and I posted the, the video of the concept, the understanding. Um, and, you know, for me, I... Uh, it's all the same thing, seeing it over and over and over again. So it's all these outlier kind of names that give you uh, these pronounced moves. So that's kind of the word that I used in the Trader's Lounge when somebody asked me a similar question. I, I think that these big moves, they're so pronounced that you get to see it so clear that you can start to apply it to other names, essentially. So uh, anytime you have these outlier moves... And it starts to really go sideways, like maybe even BTBT, you might get some good information on Monday, Tuesday. Um, but uh, it's always the outlier type trades. Uh, question, I dig your weekend Twitter because it's comforting to see you aren't uh, staring at charts seven days a week. Back in the day, did you uh, grind more over the weekend? And if so, was the weekend grind necessary to develop into a successful trader you've become? So, um, yeah, I definitely did some work on the weekends, but it's always been important for me to try to get away just because I do spend a lot of hours during the week and uh, especially with kids and a wife and you know life in general you do have to find that balance it's something that I've struggled with for quite some time um, but I think you probably can see and I always just post it uh, on Twitter just to keep myself accountable not to say ha, I'm getting out early I, I don't care about that kind of stuff but it it shows the progression of a, a trader and the importance of uh, life balance, I think. And I still can do a, a lot better. You know, it's very difficult for me to uh, take time off and just be in the other room. Because I know if I hear a ding or if I know if I, you know, one of my alerts goes off or whatever, I know that there's a profit opportunity there. It's a lot easier for me to just get out, you know, go, uh, go out on the water or go uh, visit somebody or, or go somewhere away from the house. Because then it's like, you know what, I can't, I can't do that. So um, during the week, I've been working on, and you've probably seen it uh, at least two out of the two days the last couple weeks uh, per week, I've been getting out early. So um, that's something that I haven't done in, in years and years and years. Um, but on the weekends, yeah, I try to, uh, I usually prepare Saturday for like an hour, hour and a half, uh, one, you know, what I'm going to talk about potentially to scan and three just kind of generally what's going on and then Sunday I do this which is actually sort of my own homework right so selfishly I you know I it helps me right because I'm going over what my game plans are and if I'm starting to do something else on on Monday that's not you know what I said on the video then you know I kind of I kind of catch myself um, so yeah I think it's important to get away and you know, look, work smarter, not harder, right? So you can always be doing back testing. You can always be looking at certain things, but really it just depends on what your strategy needs. And there's a lot better traders than me that do just amazing things with the data they collect and stuff, but they're also working even harder. And 
again, it comes down to balance. So I found a, a strategy, I found a type of trading uh, and a happy medium where I don't need to be doing it, you know, 24 seven to be successful at it. Uh, and you know, yeah, I could do and make a lot more, but it's not important to me. Um, next one was how can long trade stocks with no volume? Then, uh, out of nowhere, they swipe then straight up, uh, recent examples, FLGC and AHPI, no real liquidity pre-market. And then it just at open, it just goes up. I mean, that's just, everybody's chasing everything right now. It's a very FOMO filled market. Everybody's excited to be part of the next X, Y, Z, even if it's not. Um, so that's why you've had so many nice opportunities on the short side, because everybody wants to be part of the next neuro. Everybody wants the next FLGC. Everybody wants the next, whatever the hottest one was yesterday. And most of the time they're not. And it's just up to us to identify that and be aware of that. And so look, I, if you're prepared for the move, uh, if you had been watching it, then you might be able to react out of the open and take that trade. Uh, but a lot of times the moves right off the open, if they're low flow, a lot of times they're just being promoted by somebody. And that's just all the people chasing. And so for me, I want to see how it reacts after, right? So for, for, for me, 9.45 to 10 a.m. is sort of the micro, like, I'm not looking for my macro thought, my, my full day on one. I'm not looking for that trade yet. Uh, I'm going in thinking, all right, there's a, an edge here and I could cover here, get that buffer, get that realized up so that I can then be patient, 9.45, 10 a.m. plus. But, you know, if, if you're prepared for something off the open, go for it. But, you know, for me, it just depends, you know, if it's thin, uh, you know, I, I haven't been really trading that many thin stocks. I don't, I don't really want to get caught. It's very easy to get outsized as you scale up. Um, you know, most of my small cap, the guys that have made, uh, you know, insane amounts of, of money in small caps have all progressed, right? Because at some point you become your own risk, right? So you're outsized for that particular small cap. All of a sudden you're trading too large on a million, two million float and you become the squeeze, right? So everybody, the, the progression of once you've kind of, uh, maxed out in small cap land is, you know, you start to get into these bigger trades, the T triple Qs, uh, pins, you know, stuff like that, where you can actually trade and not really, you, you're just a little, a little fish in a big pond rather than a big fish in a, in a small pond. So, um, last one that came in, how would you recommend traders go about detaching themselves emotionally from the trade and money? If, uh, only one could think as clearly as, uh, they do when they're not in the trade and when they're actually, uh, really in it. And so, I mean, it, that just comes down. Everybody, everybody's got a different, uh, kind of situation, right? And, uh, losses that I thought used to be, you know, just devastating are now sometimes rounding errors, right? So you just, you don't want to rush it. You want to grow with your portfolio. You know, sometimes people say, oh yeah, if I had your kind of money or if, if I had that kind of money, or if I did this or did that be so much easier, it's not, it's not because when you have more money in there, you need better risk management or else it's gone too. So, um, I think it's just important to understand a system, understand a process and understand what makes it a good risk. And it shouldn't be emotional. It should be systematic. It should be, Hey, I'm risking this because if I'm right, it's going to be that. And 70, 80, 90% of the time, typically it would work out. That's good risk reward. Just taking a trade randomly and oversizing and hoping for the best. I mean, that's where you're going to have those outlier risk, outlier losses, outlier uh, situations that you don't and shouldn't be faced with. Um, so that's that. Let's get back or let's get into the second part of the scan and uh, get prepared for tomorrow. All right, guys, first and foremost, as always, I'm not a financial advisor. This is for educational and informational purposes only. The point of this, the goal of this is to share with you how I prepare for the week ahead, uh, show you how I make plans, what I feel is good risk reward and all that kind of stuff that I think can benefit you. But these are not buy or sell recommendations. So if you want to be told what to buy or sell, join another service. We don't do that. That's not what we're about. We're about actually learning how to trade and how to prepare proper risk management process, 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 process. 
So, first and foremost, BTBT, uh, huge move, really nice daily chart. Daily chart is uh, starting to really look like a potential breakout, and then they dropped an F, uh, F3, F1, F3, I think F3, after hours for selling shareholders. So, it's not, they're not raising money as a company. They're still, they're trying to, they're trying to raise a uh, half a billion dollars, but that's not effective yet. So, uh, I think that a lot of people shorted into that, not really reading the entire filing. And like I said in the room at 5.29 p.m., I felt like they would stabilize it from here. And sure enough, it went all the way back up to the high. So now you've got a bunch of shorts on the wrong side, scratching their heads, wondering, what did I just do? I just had the best bailout ever. And all of a sudden, I'm back with more size in a terrible spot. So... The other thing too is let me check here on Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, it's still hanging around, but Bitcoin had a nice big move after hours. It's back over 40. It went up to 42,000, and so hopefully, you know, it continues to stay, uh, and uh, this thing continues to go. I would love to see 10 or 12 or something crazy, but keep in mind, know what you own. At some point, they're gonna raise a bunch of money. Uh, in my opinion, they won't do it as an offering. They likely will do it just like the rest, some type of ATM, and we'll see the slow and steady death uh, over time. But that doesn't matter on the front side of the move. So, uh, cautiously optimistic, waiting for some type of parabolic move to react to, um, and then otherwise, I'll leave it alone. I don't think I'll probably get long, but never know. Just depends on the setup. Uh, AMD, nice opportunity on Friday. It flushed right into VWAP, and for the first time maybe ever, <laughs> I covered and left it alone after that. So AMD always has my number, or maybe I just suck at trading it, but um, typically, like I said, uh, pre-market, and, and I really do think verbalizing your trade thesis, your ideas, does help, right? So pre-market on Friday, I gave the same kind of speech that typically... AMD, I nail the entry, scale in perfectly, get a nice big trade going, and then I overstay, comes all the way back up to my average, then I overstay, and then it squeezes me out on size. And so I was ultra aware of that on Friday. And when it flushed out, I covered about half. It rebounded, came back to VWAP, and it held. I covered the rest and I never looked back because I know that that's my weakness and because I verbalized it pre-market, I'm doing what I said. And so that was a great opportunity, great exit, but I think we're going to have an A-plus trade here as well. Uh, this move is is pretty big, uh, but at the same time, it's it's only 90 to 105. I mean, it's it's got volume to support it, so we easily could go 110, 112, 115, but if we go 110, 115 that day, we're also probably gonna have a three or a five dollar pullback on size that you know I normally wouldn't trade on it, right? Because there's the volume, there's that opportunity, there's better risk reward trading in this type of market than usual. So therefore, I will likely be a lot larger when and if the opportunity comes. So I wanna be prepared for two things, one, we may gap down anyway tomorrow. The hospitalization rates have gone through the roof again. So there's a good chance that we do actually gap down. And if so, then I'd look for failed follow through and join that trend. But in a perfect world, we get a gap up, we get some type of parabolic move. Uh, and I'd be looking for that exchange, that exhaustion move, and not to try to find the top, but let it fail, fail again and start to fade and then cautiously scale into that trade. Uh, pins was great. Pins game plan off the open. Reactive trade goal pre-market was 60 to 62. We got right into the middle of that. I was able to react, cover some into the flush. Again, pre 945, 10 a.m. If you nail the move, for me, you know, it flushes out a dollar, dollar fifty. I'm locking in. Maybe not all of it, but at least some. Because more often than not, you could be dead right for two or three minutes and then dead wrong ten minutes later. So I'd rather wait for 9.45, 10 a.m. things to settle down before I start having some type of patience thoughts. Those are my main watches. That's it. That's three of them, right? Uh, one, two, three. So you can see pretty condensed list, as always. And given it's Monday, there's going to be plenty of new opportunities. There's going to be a lot of FOMO from the weekend. So I'm sure I'll 
probably only have one or two of those on watch and then another one or two from uh, whatever pre-market action is happening. The next section is found follow through. I'm looking for failed follow through setup. If you guys don't know what that is, we go over it through the educational material. Uh, T triple Q, obviously Amazon is heavily weighted here. Uh, I do think that we might have that slow mo roll uh, towards the 120 level at some point soon, but at the same time, who knows? You know, maybe we just magnet on the highs and all these hospitalization numbers don't matter. You know, you never know. So. We'll see what happens here, and uh, it's been a great trader. So I'm going to be looking to be able to join the trend. This is another one like AMD where, you know, right now, great volume, great liquidity, great opportunity uh, to really scale into the trades. Uh, AHPI and APT. Uh, AHPI, one thing that I kind of want to mention is the um, looking left. And I posted this on, the, um, on Twitter and in the room. And if you look back at the last run, you'll see that we had trouble at the same level once again. So, doesn't mean it's always going to top there. But it's a good starting point to understand where it might have trouble, where it might have resistance, where it could be a good short, where it could potentially run to. And so, once again, same deal. You also saw that, by the way, on BTVT. And we finally broke it after hours. But, you know, same thing over and over and over and over you can throw this into your trading arsenal it'll help you uh, not get bent on the front side and find good spots for potential reversals uh sava i have this on the failed follow-through i still do think that it could unwind a little bit more um but i'm thinking it actually gaps up so if it were to gap up two to five or five to eight i could see that unwinding what i want to be aware of is sometimes these things rebound and they rebound hard and you're like all right this went up way too much too fast and so then you have another one and another one it squeezes out so be aware of the potential of that i call it the bear market rally obviously we're not in a bear market yet but um you know same concept never underestimate a bear market rally uh and you know sometimes you get that rebound it just starts to catapult over one another so uh there's that uh apt i'm going to be watching i don't think that money's going to stay flowing into masks. There's so many masks now. It's not like before where there's a shortage of masks and, and all this kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, I get it. I get the concept. I get why they're, they're going up. But at the same time, is it really like last time? No. So uh, I would be cautious getting super, super uh, bullish. And I'm going to be looking for this to actually start to unwind at some point. I think the key levels are 1220 to 1170s. And you can kind of see that if you just look back and um, you know, you can see the peak here and you can see sort of a, a base kind of forming in, in this range. So that's why I picked those levels. If it starts to peak out 1170s, I'd probably be using 1220s as my guide on risk. Uh, FLGC is one of those that I want to just see kind of fade off people's radars uh, and then potentially be a nice fader. Snap. I'll be watching with pins and the rest as potential. And, uh, you know, that's it for the failed follow throughs. Uh, snap may break out, but I'm I probably wouldn't join uh, join that move. I, I'm looking for a failed follow through setup. Uh, last but not least is the continuation trades. So ADMP, I started in on Friday uh, with the thought process that one, mass plays don't really make sense. Two, they're probably going to start to go uh, into these drug type names, uh, thinking that there was going to be a spike of uh, hospitalization. Uh, numbers over the weekend and we got that it's starting to really get serious again uh, and so the key levels for me here are the 120 which it has uh, now broke let's see if it bases but then 130 if it breaks over 130 we've got room easily to 150 um, so obviously have a plan but so far so good thinking that it might gap up and actually continue to uh, play out on Monday NSYS very low volume uh, nothing to, you know, be uh, aggressive about, but as you guys know, I talked about this probably a month ago uh, or three weeks ago, multiple times. I was not chasing, but I was buying dips uh, in, in the nines, and so far it's been a pretty nice uh, trade. So uh, be smart along the way. NAOV, thinking that if 230s continues to base, we might have a nice breakout type trade, um, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens here. 
I, I want to keep it on radar regardless. So uh, it's been a nice, uh, nice opportunity, and I do think that there's definitely some shorts still in here. Uh, I want to say that I'm leaning towards the fact that it, it fades and it, it, you know, falls off radar, but it did come back pretty nicely on Friday. So uh, if it does, uh, you know, defy the odds and 230 starts to base, 240s, 250s, then I, I would potentially take it as a, a breakout trade uh, based on the volume because it's had so much. So that's it. That's what I'm prepared for for the week ahead. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, leave a like. Leave your key takeaway. It helps us help you. And because of that, we send out thank yous via T-shirts, meals, lots of stuff. So uh, have a great weekend, and we'll catch you in the room on Monday.